Hello and welcome to Learning Music with Pat. During the last two segments, I showed you some extra instruments. Out in one segment, I showed you penny whistles, and I have one with me today, and we talked about them. And I also showed you sasutos. We took one segment for each of these two instruments. So today, I want to show you some more instruments that are recorder-like instruments. As you know, I have quite a collection, almost 300 instruments in my collection, most of them which I play, most of them which are, are playable, except for a couple of rare ones that I don't play. So uh, it's interesting to see the variety that exists in woodwind instruments. And the wonderful thing about woodwind instruments is that many of them, when you learn to play one, you can transfer the information that you know to another instrument. That works in quite a few. So I'm brought in with me on this segment some recorder-like instruments, which I call the melody flutes. That would include Indian flutes, uh, sasutos, penny whistles, which you've already seen, but also ocarinas, melodicas, other kinds of melody instruments, the Peruvian flutes, the end-blown flutes, and so forth. Now, I don't have them all with me today, but what I tried to do is to bring in a sampling of the instruments that I have that operate very closely to the recorder. They have the same kinds of fipple mouthpieces. The penny whistles do, and I showed them to you either one or two segments ago. The sasutos do, and I showed them to you also. But I have another group of instruments here today. A lot of them Peruvian, a lot of them are from other countries. They have the same kind of, of uh, operation with the mouthpieces. They have the same kind of mouthpiece. They have the same kind of aperture in it. And so therefore, I'm, I just want to show them to you so you'll get some kind of an idea as to the variety that exists. Now, let me show you this one here first. This is an Indian flute. I'll hold it in front of me. You can see that the, uh, the uh, tone holes are up and down, in line, about the same size. I really believe this comes from India. It's not an American Indian flute. It comes from India, and it's made out of bamboo. And as I turn it around, you can see that there are decorations on it. A lot of these instruments are hand-painted, they're handmade, and I want to show you that um, when it, for the fipple mouthpieces, you can see there's a curve here, and the, the mouthpiece where you blow in is right here. This is like a typical fipple mouthpiece that you would find on any recorder. And on the back side, you have that block that you have on the mouthpieces of the recorder. And on that, you have a C. It's the letter C. And I tend to think, although I can't be absolutely sure, that that's made to let you know that this instrument is in the key of C. I don't know what else it would be for, because it is in the key of C. And there's a labium right on the mouthpieces. A lot of these instruments that come from foreign countries that are made out of bamboo, the labium is inside or in the mouthpiece itself, whereas the recorder, it's just right below it. But it works in the same kind of way, in the same kind of principle. So this is an Indian instrument. Okay, then I'm going to go and, and uh, uh, just show you the Peruvians. I brought in two or, three pre, two or three Peruvians last time, but as you can see, the same kind of mouthpiece. It looks like a fipple mouthpiece, and it's very, very decorative. I have had this one in before. This one comes from Peru, and the mouthpiece is, uh, I'm sorry, the fingerings are like a, a lot lower than they would be on a regular recorder. But if you look at it, you can see the labium on the top, and if you look on the back side, you can see the block in the back, and it's not painted, but the rest of it is. A bamboo instrument, lots of decorations, and the mouth and the uh, tone holes are, are like the other ones, just right down in a straight line. And let me just turn this around so you can see some of the decorations of it. It really is quite nice. 
and it does play. Some of these instruments that are, are coming from other uh, countries, Caribbean countries and India, when you look at the bottom, we have an, on regular recorders kind of a big space. You could stick your finger and everything right in there, but these are pretty much covered with a small hole. And I'm assuming that the bore of these instruments is not very wide because if it were, the, the tone hole, or the hole on the bottom would also be wide. So there we have, this is Peruvian. They make instruments that are very nice, very colored, very colorful. And I want to show you another one. And this one I haven't had in much, much. It's also Peruvian, and it's larger. I'm going to put the tendril, there's a little string. You know why this is a little cord, colorful cord, it's in two or three colors. The reason it's here is that you're supposed to put this over your neck and then the instrument hangs down in front of you and you play it. That's what that's for. And the Indian flutes, a lot of them are like that. So let me move this out of the way and show you these instruments. This is green, it's actually a very beautiful one. And you can see right in the center, this finger hole here, the hole has been made into the, into the center of a flower. If I twist it around a little bit, you'll be able to see that flower. And it's very nice, it's just a very nice instrument. And the block is in the back. There is a tone hole in the back for the thumb. The thumb hole is right here. Where my, th where my finger is. I hope you can see that okay. Um, stained, it's just a really nice instrument. There's a bird symbol on the front of it. I think you can pick that up. I hope you can pick that up. So it's just very colorful and nice. I like those, these instruments that these countries make. They're made, a lot of them, for tourists, so tourists can bring them back. But I attended a seminar on music in which everyone was given a, a, uh, an Indian instrument made in India as kind of a keepsake. And we played them, and they taught us how to play them. And you know, there's not a whole lot to it because everything you know about woodwinds transfers. Of course, if you were there and you didn't know anything about woodwinds, you needed the instruction. It was really a very nice thing. And they had a few of them left over, quite a few. And so they said, Pat, take as many as you want. And so I did. I took the rest of them. So now I have a box full of Indian flutes. So at any rate, there's this one. Now other instruments um, that are not Peruvian, that are made in the United States, the clocks. I want to show you the clocks instruments. I want to make sure I've got the right, right ones here. These two, and I'll show them to you separately. These are all um, uh, come to a point. You know, and so they're a little different. They're not like a conical one. They come to a point. And when they, and the one that's in, uh, that is C, in the key of C, is black. Now it's made, they're made out of metal. They're not uh, made out of bamboo. They're made out of metal. And uh, they have the same, in the back they have the same thing. You have the block, but it's a metal mouthpiece. It's all one piece. You don't pull it apart. There's no head joint and foot joint and body. They have the aperture of the labium right here, and it plays pretty well. Um, it's a softer tone. And I think the reason it's a softer tone is that this whole thing where you blow in is made out of wood. The instrument itself is metal. So you may say it's a wooden plugged fipple mouthpiece. That's what I call it, a wooden plugged fipple mouthpiece. And there is the wood. And of course, it, it plays on the same kind of a principle as the recorders play. It's clocks. It's made in England. It's a softer tone because of the fact of the fact of the wood plugged mouthpiece. I believe that's the reason. And it has this one here, which is in the key of D, which is also a wooden plugged fipple mouthpiece. I'll show the back of it to you right here. 
and it has a little labium right on the mouthpiece, and it's metal, and also comes to a point. It also comes to a point. You know, um, the cylindrical ones stay the same. You know, they're just straight up and down. The conical ones come to a point. So there it is, and it's in the key of D. You can see how soft the tone is. Now that wasn't that hard to play. Some scale work, some accidentals, but not that hard to play. But you notice that the instrument is very soft tone, and that's the same for the clock C. It's very soft tone. They all are. Now this one is interesting because it's like the other ones, but this is a Shaw's. This is a Shaw's. It's also a wooden plugged fipple mouthpiece, and it's in the key of E. Very, very seldom would you ever be able to get an instrument like this in the key of C. They're usually in the key, uh, in the key of E. They're usually in the key of C or D or G, or they're out of pitch altogether. So let me try this. This is a Shaw's. It's a little brasher and a little louder than the clocks, but it's basically the same. And I could get it in a high pitch very, very squealy, but I won't do that. But there it is. So many instruments that are like a recorder and the fact that they have a mouthpiece that is similar to a fipple mouthpiece, and they have a lot of them have the block in the back. They operate on, on the same principle. They have all their tone holes in the front. Some of them have thumb holes in the back. This one does not. Some do and some don't. And uh, they play it in the same kind of fashion as the other recorders do. Now I wanted to show you also, these are the sweet tones. They're made in England. Uh, I think they're made in England. Yeah, they are. They're made by clocks. They're called the sweet tones. And the sweet tones have plastic mouthpieces. They come in red, or green. I bought them both because I wanted the different colors. And so they're metal. They're made out of metal, like the clocks, like the shahs. They're made out of metal. And, but they have plastic mouthpieces. And you don't see a block. It will be in there, but you don't see it. All you see is the plastic. The, um, the aperture or labium is right on the mouthpiece. And they play exactly the same way. They're both in the key of D. But since I wanted the, the same color, since I wanted the colors, I'll show you what they play like. No tone holes in the back. Let me try the other one. Should be whoops, it should be exactly the same. in a sense a step up from the penny whistles, but they basically like a penny whistle. The Shaws, the Clarks, they're all similar to the penny whistles. These are called sweet tones, but they're made by Clarks. They're an English instrument, but they do very well, and I enjoy playing them. Now we also have, that I want to bring in to you, this little thing that's supposedly a recorder. Isn't that tiny? 
It's really kind of a toy, and you'll never guess where I bought it. I bought it at Wendy's. They had a special on them for children. And I said, I like the looks of that, and so I bought a couple of them. Why buy one when you can buy two? Kind of loses its pitch a little when you get on the lower register, but it's very playable. And <clears throat> probably not in the key that you'd ever use. They're kind of a toy, but they do play. I have to hand it to them. They made a toy that actually works. You know, and the other two I wanted you to see on this segment is the song flute and the tonette. The tonette, they're very, very similar. The, they, have, they both have in the back a tone hole for the thumb. You can't see it because it's black, but they're there. The tonette had, flares out a little bit like a flutophone. I could have brought in the flutophones, but I had so many today that I didn't. I left them home. But this is a little bit like a flutophone. It has a bell on it. Anytime you have an instrument that flares out, it's considered to be a bell. And uh, it has, it's interesting because it does have a place for you to put your thumb in the back and a tone hole in addition to that. So I don't know if you can pick this up. But there's a little place here, you put your thumb right there. Now you're not playing anything with it, it's just the rest to put it, to show you where you put your thumb. And then of course uh, um, the right hand goes on the bottom. And then on the top you have the thumb hole and you actually cover it to play the notes. And sometimes you could fiddle around with it and get some extra notes if you have hole. It's nothing to write home about, but it really does work. And the, the similarity is very between that and the song flute. The song flute, I think, is actually a little better. It comes to a point, it doesn't have a bell on it. It has uh, the uh, fingerings, and the, you'll notice that the finger holes, they're, they're, they're built up a little. So it's very obvious where you put your hands. And uh, there's a little design, a little line between the thumb holes, uh, between the various tone holes. I don't know if you can catch that or not. Okay, let me play a little on it. It's, it's actually quite a nice instrument. Now, neither of these instruments can you do octaves. You can do octaves on the shahs, on the sasutos, on the penny whistles, and, uh, and uh, the uh, sweet tones. You can do octaves on it. You can't do octaves on a flutophone. You can't do them on the song flute. You can't do them on the tonettes. You can only do one octave. You can somehow squeeze in one extra note sometimes, but for some reason, even though it has a tone hole in the back, it will not do octaves. So uh, that's what I want to show you uh, this time around. And we do have a, a few minutes left. I want to, I'll just review with you some things about music on these charts because I want to start you playing, but I also want you to see the various instruments. So this is a, a when we have, we, when we have discussed the uh, fingerings, B, a, G, F, E, D, C, and then I added a couple, the higher C, the D, and the E. Let me go over that now, and then uh, next time, we're going over a little bit. I'm going to show you some more instruments, but we'll go over timing a little, too, and then play something. So here's your B, A, G, F, E, D. Never forget the fundamentals because that's what's going to help you to play well. You have your fingerings, B, A, G. Left hand on top always, F, E, D. Uh, right hand on the bottom always. Then the lower hand, the lower thumb, a, a little finger goes down. That's going to be your low C. Your upper C is going to be just this note with the thumb hole covered, C. So you could be going C, 
B A G F E D C. And then when you want to go above C, you can get an E, which is above it, and you lift your thumb, and the only finger down to play is the middle finger of my left hand. You can see I'm wiggling the other fingers around. If I put my thumb on the tone hole in the back, the thumb hole, that goes back to C. To get the E, lift that off. So if I go from G, there's your D right there. If I play the low D, which has just about every finger covered, because remember, B, A, G, F, E, D, plus a thumb hole, that's everything covered except the little finger, then you got your low D. To get the higher D, you take everything off except the middle finger of the left hand. And it's good if you're learning how to play to practice that because you've got an issue of balancing the instruments. It is not uncommon for a beginner to actually drop the instrument on some of the higher notes because they don't have a way to balance. So if you get to the E, to the D, one way to balance is to put your right uh, pinky finger down. It's not going to affect the note because you're not using these other notes here. If you're using these other notes, then it would make a difference. But you could put that little pinky down, and of course your mouth actually holds it. In fact, if you wanted to, I think you could put both the fourth and the fifth finger down. and then lift them up as you have other fingers down, like, for example, the F and the E, because you'll just get extra notes. Well, I'm going to close it here, and because we're just about out of time. And next, uh, next segment, I'm going to show you some other instruments that are like recorders, and then go on into uh, reviewing some timing with you, and then we'll start playing. I have some music written out for us to do that. So uh, thank you for watching, and please join me next time.